while I came in and wrote lesson plans. Right. And then I came, because I thought, oh, he'll be okay for this hour, then I'm gone. It didn't even make it through. So, anyway, I just wanted to. Well, then you have to Okay, so. <laughs> Suggestions here. What do we do? What do we do? Uh, uh, we, uh, differentiate. Differentiate. Let's implicitly differentiate. Okay. So, what do I get from the first term? X, Y prime. Okay, so it's right. We got product rule. X, Y prime. Plus Y. Plus Y. So we did that. Plus Y. Plus Y. Plus y. Yeah. y times. And minus okay. 2YY prime. Minus two y y prime. Two y y. Clutch. Okay. Hey, I got too many little conversations going on here. I know you guys probably a lot of you probably have this done. Uh, now what? Talk to me about what to do if we're just trying to find the the tangent and normal lines at that point of tangency. Suggestions? Yes, sir. So isolate the term. Okay, well, yeah, we can do that. We can isolate the y prime terms. So then we get x y prime minus 2 y y prime. Push the other stuff right. Uh, what we get? Negative 2 x minus y. Okay. Okay, yeah, and, and there you go. We could at this point, and, and honestly, we don't even really have to do what we just did there. We can't. But if, if we're just trying to get. Uh, a, a number out of this for a slope, you know, we can just plug in the numbers right now, right, mm -hmm. and solve for y prime. And then we end up with a much easier problem to simplify. We're just, we're just combining numbers instead of variables, right? Huh. Yeah. So if we're plugging in 2 for x and 5 for y, we get 2, oh, that's virtual ink smudge, 2 y prime, let's see, minus 2 times 5 would be 10 y prime equals uh, negative 4 minus 5. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So negative 8 y prime equals negative 9. So what's y prime? 9 eighths. 9 eighths. 9 eighths. Very close. Okay, so there's y prime. Uh, and remember, our, I'm just going to rewrite our point of tangency so we can scoot down here. Now, if we're looking for a tangent line, so what? What's what's the significance of that? The derivative? The, it's the slope. Yeah, that's the slope of the tangent line, isn't it? So, so for the tangent, there's the slope, there's the point. It's pretty straightforward from there, isn't it? We can just do uh, we know M, we're trying to find B, so we'll plug in all this stuff, right? So 5 equals 9 eighths times 2 plus B, so what are we going to get there? 9 fourths, so 5 equals 9 fourths plus B, so what do we get then? Uh, 20 fourths minus, so 11 fourths? Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> so B is 11 fourths. We know what, we know what M is, and so therefore the, the equation of the tangent line. 9 eighths X plus 11 fourths. The other one, we won't even do the second part. What, what's how would we do the second part? What's the only real difference? Reciprocal. Opposite yeah. reciprocal. Yeah. So the slope of the normal line would just be instead of positive nine eighths, negative eight ninths. Same same issue though, right? Just find an equation of line. Okay, no big deal. All right. Um, do you want to do? I'll let you decide if you want to do this guy. It's a unicorn. Oh.
Do you want to do that one? Second derivative one? Okay. Might as well. No gain. The second derivative is filthy. Yeah. It really does. Okay, so second derivative, first derivative is no big deal, probably, right? Go ahead and have at it, and I'll, I'll, I'll how about if we each just do the first derivative together, and then we'll talk about what to do with the second derivative. Okay. So when we're calculating the second derivative, do we want to probably work on the in the left column or over here? I'd say the left, right? Because then we're not having to deal with the quotient rule. Now, one thing that would be helpful to do here would be maybe to just divide a two out of both sides. Yeah. Might as well get it as simplified as we can. So y y prime equals five x plus four. Okay, go. And we're just differentiating implicitly with respect to x. Yeah. Just another second <coughs> derivative. So, suggestions. What are we going to get from the from differentiating the left side of this guy? Uh, okay. So first times derivative of the second plus y prime times y prime, which is good. So I'm, I'm trying to find y double prime. I already know what y prime is. I'm trying to find y double prime. So we'll just isolate y double prime. And we get what? 5 minus y prime squared over y. Okay, but we want to have y double prime in terms of x and y. So what do we do? 
substitute. Good. Okay. So if we make this substitution, we get 5 minus the quantity, 5x plus 4 over y <coughs> squared divided by y. Oh, geez. Yeah. <coughs> so then we're going to flip and multiply by the bottom. But first, we've got to get the, the top as one big derivative, right? Yeah. It's a little messy. It is a little messy. So, but that's all right. These, you just got to persevere with these. I mean, it just seems like it, sometimes it looks like it's just daunting. But if you just are careful, it'll work out. So what is 5x plus 4 quantity <coughs> squared, first of all? 25. X squared plus. Remember how to do that? If we're squaring a plus the like a plus b, real quick. Uh, if we're doing something like this, the binomial expansion for a plus b. A squared plus two ab. Plus b squared. Right. So that's the pattern that we're using. Right. So we get a is 5x, b is 4, right? So a squared is 25x squared. What's 2ab? 40x. 40x. And then b squared, 16, right? Divided by y. But while we're at it, why don't we get a common denominator here? Divided by y squared, sorry. Okay, so in order to get a, a common denominator, what am I going to multiply the 5 by? Y squared. Y squared over Y squared, right? So I get, I've got 5 over Y, 5 Y squared over Y squared minus all this stuff, right? On the top. Kind of ugly. All over Y. Oh my goodness. Right? <coughs> So then on the top, just yeah, we're just distributing a, a minus sign all the way through that, aren't we? Right? So we get negative, oops, sorry, we get So there's the numerator. If we're dividing by y. That's the same as multiplying by 1 over y, right? So really all that's doing is, yeah, it's making a y cubed on the bottom, right? So we just get, kind of run out of room here, but we'll make it work. So if I multiply the top by the reciprocal of the bottom, Math that's not looking favorable upon you. There's my answer. Kind of ugly, but that's it. That's more ugly. Let's do it again. Okay. Does that make sense? It's my it's my minus. What was the equation for that a plus b squared? Okay, it's a squared plus two ab. Yeah, it, you know, and we need to do that. That's a good pre-Christmas thing. Like once, yeah. Okay. You got to do. Give us a word. Let us do it over break. Yeah. Like we call it the snowman. Like you have to graph the points to make a snowman or something. You're doing that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I keep threatening to do this, and we just have been so busy with calculus, I haven't felt like burdening you. But you know, it really helps to just know that stuff. You know, if, if there's a short list of a few things to know, and I'll, I'll tell you what it is. Just here are a couple of them that's worth knowing. Okay, what do I need to know? So just write these down. These are, I mean, these are a couple of expansions that I think it's useful to know. If you know that a plus b squared. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, one thing also, you, you don't want to you don't want to have to memorize more stuff than you need to. No. B could be negative, couldn't it? Yep. <laughs> right? And so really this this would help us if we wanted to do something like the quantity 2x minus 3 squared. That pattern is all we need. 
right? Because 2x minus 3 is the same as 2x plus negative 3, right? So what's that going to be? 4x squared plus 12x. Minus 12x, because it's plus 2 times 2x times negative 3, right? See what I'm saying? So there's the minus 12x plus 9. Plus 9. There you go, right? Otherwise, it's, you know, a lot of times books will have you memorize the, the positive and the minus for, and that just, you, know, you don't need to do that. Just memorize one, but just know that either one of those terms could be negative, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the other one that's really nice, too, the one that, that we see a fair amount is a plus b cubed. Okay. And, and then beyond that, I would just make Pascal's oh, triangle. That's so right there. Same, all, or same, opposite, always positive, or something like that. OK. Like a little, yeah, there, there might, I, I've so never heard that one. That would make sense. Don't drop it. Just so watch, watch it when he does it. So it's a cubed. Remember what the, <laughs> what the coefficients are of the two middle terms? Well, we know we know what the powers do, right? The powers go a cubed, a squared, b to the one, a to the one, b squared, b cubed. But remember what the coefficients are? Okay, they're always going to be symmetrical in a binomial expansion. So, like here we had one, two, one. Here we've got one, three, three, one. Okay, so we don't really write write the one, I guess, do we? I just didn't say. And that's, that's kind of useful to know. Beyond that, you know, the next one, I think, is 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. But, you know, I mean, those you have to remember. Just write Pascal's triangle down beyond that. That's, it's where you go the one past Pascal. Oh, it looks like this. It's, it's like. OK. Well, that's probably good. We'll get, we'll get the next stuff later. So look at this guy. Angles. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just do, how about if we just do part A? 30 degrees. Okay, so we're trying to... Oh, I need to know this one. Yeah, this is this is what people had some trouble with. So, if the uh, airplane flies... No one had this one. This one's a little different than the ones on the test. But same idea. Yeah. Uh, airplane flies at an altitude of 5 miles towards a point directly over an observer. The speed of the plane is 600 miles per hour. Find the rate at which the angle of elevation theta is changing when the angle is 30 degrees. And then we'll just do 30 degrees. Okay. Cool. All right. So what are our what are our variables here? They've given us theta. What else is changing? Okay. So what is yeah? So the speed of the plane is 600 miles per hour. The, it's flying horizontally, right? It's not. So what's a okay? So that would be maybe an x dot, wouldn't it? If x were this distance, that's an x dot, right? Okay. Do we need this variable here? Do we do we want that variable? Because really, what we're we're trying to find, aren't we, theta dot? So we don't we don't need it, and we don't want it. All we have to, we can relate theta to x and, and this constant 5 through a tangent function or a cotangent function, whichever one seems easier, okay? So if we write down our snapshot values then, uh, x equals, doesn't tell us. We don't know that. But we do know that x dot equals, okay, is it 600? How come? Because it's moving towards it. Okay, because it's decreasing, right? The distance between the, the distance x is decreasing, so the rate of change has to be negative. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so it's negative 600 in miles per hour. Okay, so we're so we're measuring distance in miles, time in hours. Now there's a on the test on those those problems that are on the test and the review. You got to be careful with the units. They did some kind of, and I didn't make those. They did some kind of sneaky unit things to you, like they'd give you a rate in terms of feet or something, and then they'd want to know what it, what the rate of change is in terms of inches or something, you know. So you kind of be careful with those. Right? You got to, you got to. Yeah, it's dirty. Now, when I go through and, and kind of hand grade these tests, I mean, I try to find as much as I can. I try to find where people just overlook little things like that, award them partial credit, but it's you know, it's only partial credit, and I don't always get every one of those either. So just be careful. 
Uh, what else do we know? Uh, let's see, we know theta, right? Yeah. Theta is in degrees, it's 30 degrees, and we're looking for theta dot. Okay, so so what are our what, what's what's our parent? And this actually these really aren't that bad. And that one, I know the one that people are thinking of mostly is that building one. That building one, there's a couple tricky things on the building one, but really the the actual calculus is very simple. Once you get it set up, the calculus is not a big deal. Uh, okay, so parent function. Tan let's try tangent. How about? Okay, so if Tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent, 5 over x. Okay, now this is, this is going to work, but do you see that really cotangent might be a better choice here? Because we, you know, they, they both work, right? They're both trig relationships that involve opposite and adjacent. But cotangent of theta, yeah, puts the x on the top, right? And so now we don't have to deal with the x to the negative 1 power, right? I mean, it just makes the derivative cleaner. When we do the derivative here, for one thing, when we're differentiating with respect to t, look what happens. I want you just to see, if you look ahead here, what happens. We're not going to do this one because it really is harder. But watch how hard this gets. Not super hard, but harder. If I differentiate with respect to t, that's a chain rule problem, right? I've got negative 5x <coughs> to the Z negative 2x dot. Two layers. Look over here. That's one layer. That's just one fifth x. So the derivative of this side here is just a plain old x dot. Right? We don't have x given to us up here. And so we'd have to go back and fill in the blanks for x, which we don't really want to do. Right? So, so we're not doing this. We're just saying no. Uh, so we can differentiate then, right? What's the derivative of cotangent? Uh, negative cosecant squared. Good, negative cosecant squared. Yeah. And over here, we just get x dot over 5, right? Yeah. Just 1 fifth x dot. OK, so now what about the cosecant? Oh, I was going to say, <clears throat> multiply. Oh, with theta dot, sorry. We forgot the theta dot. My mistake. My mistake. And that's the one. I'll, I'll make that different color so we can. Whoops, different color so we can. It really sticks out. Much. Okay, good. So now we solve for theta dot. We've got a. We, we, what do we do with this cosecant squared theta? Okay, so I, I mean I, I could divide both sides by that, right? Which I can do, and that's fine. But cosecant is the reciprocal of what? Sine. Sine. Okay, so then. So if we divide both sides by negative cosecant squared theta, we just get theta dot equals <coughs> negative 1 over cosecant squared theta times x dot over 5. But we could just as easily make it a sign. Yeah, negative reciprocal of cosecant, uh, of cosecant must be sine because sine is Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. Well, therefore, sine is also the reciprocal of cosecant, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this just looks like minus sine squared theta x dot over 5. Now, that's all stuff that I know. Sine theta, you may wonder, OK, well, how do you, how do you know sine theta? Uh, well, I do, actually, because I know what theta is. Theta is 30. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. So I do. I'm giving the angle here anyway. You're giving an x dot too. Right? So sine of 30 is what? Um, uh, is what is it? Yeah, think unit circle. One half? One half, yeah. Because 30 degrees is that angle right there, isn't it? Yeah. So that's angle. that's big X, small Y, right? So it's got to be one half. So it's got to be. The x component's got to be the big one, square root of 3 over 2. The y component has to be the small one, which is 1 half. Right? Does that, does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. And then we square it. Good. Okay. Can I do it? Oh, one fourth. Yeah, you bet. I think there's even one on the little side. Yeah, we pretty well have. So, you can get one of those there. 
X dot is negative 600 over 5. So what do we get? 1 fourth, 600, 125 over 5. So that's 25. 25. Okay, and... Thirty? Yep. Is that what it is? Okay. Because we maybe have this being one fourth and then we have sixty divided yeah. by four. Okay. Like that works. Yeah. So theta dot is positive okay. thirty. Okay, so what are the units there? Why wouldn't it be degrees? Well, because degrees don't exist. Yeah, degrees don't exist. Don't exactly, Ooh. exactly. And so, although we can, that's right, that's right. And that, that's that is really the answer. Now, we, we can. It's okay for us to be initially using this angle of thirty degrees because we put it into a trig function, right? And we know what the sine of thirty degrees is. That's okay. That's just you know that that's just a ratio, really, isn't it? Sine of thirty degrees just gives us back a one half ratio of one half. Uh, but when we've got a, 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 an angle by itself, if there's just a, you know, a naked angle out there, it's not in a trig function that we've solved for, and we've got linear measurements and angles, that's the only meaning, that's, that can only be in radians, because that's the only one that has any intrinsic meaning, right? And remember the rule, whenever you mix linear, meaning non-angular measurements with angular measurements, and look, we've got a 600, that's an x, right? Or an x dot, so that's a linear measurement along with this trig function. Whenever you're mixing them up, you always have to use radians. If you're only using angular stuff, degrees are fine, right? But if you're mixing them up, you have to use radians. And so our answer, presumably, in Moodle, they would have wanted to know what's the answer going to be in degrees per, they probably would have done something tricky, like degrees per minute instead of, oh, that's filthy. Instead of per hour, right? So what we got back, so let's just let's take a quick look at that. So we got an answer of 30. We got an answer of 30 radians per hour. <coughs> so we want to turn that into, let's say, degrees per minute. So we got to multiply by two changers there, right? Okay, good. So we're going to multiply. First of all, let, let's change radians to degrees, right? You know that what you, when you're trying to find a changer, and this is, you guys know this, when you're trying to find a changer, you just want to find equal numbers of the two units, even though these aren't units. These are kind of weird, they're angular measures. But the easiest one to pick is pi radians is equivalent to 180 degrees, right? Those are those mean the same thing. So if we want degrees to end up on the top, we're going to multiply by 180 degrees over pi radians, so the radians cancel, right? And leaving us with degrees. So multiply by 180 over pi, and then what about hours to minutes? Where, where do I want the minutes to end up? Oh, yeah. <coughs> bottom. No, bottom, right? Because I want degrees per minute. So if I want minutes on the bottom, I need to cancel the hours. What's what? What numbers would I use? What's the number of hours that equals number of minutes? Yeah, one and sixty, right? Because and and you understand. I mean, I know I'm I'm telling you something you already know, but when we're multiplying by changers the actual value of the changer has to always be 1. So I'm not changing, right? Because that's the multiplicative identity. This, this, is the, this is the correct answer, wrong units. I don't want to change the value of this answer. I just want to change the units, right? So I'm always multiplying by stuff where the top of the numerator and denominator are equal. So I'm really just multiplying by 1. Does that make sense? OK, so then the hours cancel. And I end up with, let's see, 180 over 60 makes that a 3. So I get 900 over pi degrees. Did I just miss something? 90? Oh, 90. Oh, 90. Oh, 90. Oh, it's like, God, my mental math is way off. Yeah. OK, uh, degrees per minute. So I read 90 degrees. 90 over pi degrees per minute. Yeah. Uh, 
if, if they wanted you to, you certainly could. But I don't like that. I, I, I mean, I don't like that. <clears throat> that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay, if we have time, I have one more. How long do we have time? Basement yeah. house. Probably not. We we at least set it up, maybe, huh? Mm. Yellow. <laughs> so that's my picture, right? If a balloon is rising at a rate of three meters per second from a point on the ground, 30 meters from an observer. So I, do I put an X in here? No. No, no I'd rather, because it's not a variable, is it? No. So I'll just write 30, meaning it's constant. Yeah. Okay. This is changing, though, right? That's why. And we want to know change in angle of elevation. So that's our theta. Okay. Really, this is the same problem, isn't it? We'll just set, I mean, the algebra is going to be, the calculus will all be very similar. What's the snapshot stuff I know? Rate. Okay. Okay, so y is 30. Y dot is positive 3. Good. And we're trying to find theta dot. Only difference here is we're not given an angle. So that's maybe the one thing we could just take a quick look at. So when I do the, the I'm going to end up with the same, same idea, only this time we'll use a tangent, won't we? Right? Because that way the y will be on top. So we'll do... Uh, tangent theta equals y over 30, right? So when I, does that make sense? Okay, when I differentiate, I get secant squared theta, theta dot equals y dot over 30, right? Question? Okay, but how do we get, now here's, here's the, question I had for you then. How do we deal with the secant squared? We do the same kind of stuff we did before. We're solving for theta dot. Theta dot equals 1 over secant squared theta times y dot over 30. So that same thing as cosine squared, right? That helps. Reciprocal of secant is cosine. But what about this guy? How do we deal with that? We don't know. If we look back at our snapshot values, we don't know theta this time. Okay. There are a couple ways we could do this. We could fill in the blank for theta, couldn't we? I mean, we could say, and actually in this case, it's pretty easy to do. Yeah, because if we plug in y is, you know, when y is 30, if that's 30 and that's 30, what is that angle? 45, yeah, right. So we could just do that. What if that wasn't 30, though, so it wasn't quite so easy, right? Then the other thing we could do is this. If we, if we filled in that blank, I could turn this into a right triangle, right? So x squared plus y squared equals r squared in this case, right? So we get square root of 900, just 30 root 2. Square root of more than that, square root of 1,800. Uh, so 30 root 2. Uh, but and now, once I fill in that other side, Remember that this becomes what we call a reference triangle. Once we fill in all three sides of a right triangle, we can always write any of the six trig functions as a ratio of those sides. And so then cosine just becomes what ratio? Uh, cosine of theta. Over <coughs> yeah, over cosine's two. adjacent over hypotenuse, so 30 over 30 root 2, yeah. right? Yeah. See what I'm saying? That, that's the part that I, I kind of wanted you to see. So when we plug in the blanks, theta dot equals 30 over 30 root 2 squared. Well, those cancel, right? Times y dot over 30. So we get 1 over the square root of 2 quantity squared. What's that? 1 half. So... One half times, and y dot is positive three, wasn't it? One half times three over thirty. So we're going to get uh, one twentieth. Okay. <laughs> so that that's the numerical value, and our units would be in this case what? <laughs> Root 
radians per second, right? Everybody see that? Because we got the theta, we mixed up, look, we mixed up y's and, and thetas and stuff, right? So we know we've got a, it has to be in radians. And the, the angle part does. And there's the time parts in seconds, right? Yeah. So it'd be in radians per second. Yeah. Yeah. I had to change that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Now, and the reason being, when you solve for a theta by itself, it's always going to be in radians. Uh, because the three is given to us, that's why not. Oh, okay. All right, we'll give this a shot tomorrow, how about?